All right, so in the beginning, I mentioned that the way that we learn something is going to affect how we remember it. So when it comes to encoding information into our memory, we need to do stuff with that information, whether it's rehearse it over and over again, or to chunk it into meaningful pieces, or make associations with things that we already know and understand, or use some fun memory strategies. Um, so we're going to talk about those in this section so that we can uh, kind of demonstrate how the way that we encode things can affect how we remember things. So for review, I've eliminated the sensory memory part over here, but in order for information to be stored and easily retrieved from long-term memory, it first has to be associated with information that's already in the long-term memory. And so I'll give you some examples of, of how, that, how that works. But the, the bottom line is that the way that you elaborate and organize the information while you're paying attention to it, that's going to affect the way that it's stored in your long-term memory. And the more effectively and like rationally, logically, I guess you could say, this information is stored in your memory, the easier it will be for you to retrieve that. You'll be able to activate cues um, in order to help pull that information up. Sometimes you won't even necessarily need to think about it. It'll just be hit one of those, oh, that reminds me kind of situations. So let's talk about one of the ways that we uh, encode information and how that impacts our ability to recall information. So first of all, there's chunking. I'm going to show you a, a list of letters, and I want you to spend 30 seconds looking at this list of letters, and then I'm going to take them away from the screen, and I want you to write down as many of, you, of them as you can, but this time order matters, okay? So I want you to try to memorize these specific um, groups of letters, all right? And then... Um, and then I'll move away and you can pause to write those down and restart as you need it. Okay, so here's the letters. Okay, write down as many as you can remember. Pause and then restart when you're ready. Okay, so these were the letters. So you had F B I M T V U S A H B O C and I A. So some of these might have been easier for you to recall. For example, F B. Uh, how did you remember F B? Probably some of you thought Facebook, okay? So that's an example of associating information that's already in your long-term memory. Some people will remember something like this because they, they made it one word like sob. Um, you know, this one might be the OC, I don't know. So there could be, you know, some of these letters might have some meaning for you. And so that will make it easier for you to remember them. But in general, a, a list of random letters like this is going to be, it's going to be taxing on your uh, working memory. Because again, we're only talking about five to nine pieces of meaningful information that you can hold at one time. Um, and so this really, this really strains that. By contrast, what if I showed you this? Okay, so here you have, and we don't necessarily need to do that. You you can look at this list, and you know that this is uh, an easier list to memorize. This is the same letters in the same order, but we've just grouped them differently. That's all we've done is group them differently. So here we have FBI, MTV, USA, HBO, and CIA. So each of those. Rather than this being three pieces of information, your brain interprets this as one thing, one meaningful piece, you know, the FBI, the USA, you know. So these are all meaningful pieces, and so your brain interprets this and processes this as one, two, three, four, five pieces of information, really easily accessible and holdable in your working memory. And so that would be a much different situation than asking you to memorize that earlier list. Yeah, we don't have to do that. Okay. 
So again, that 7 plus or minus 2 is the chunking rule. Um, a typical adult can only hold 5 to 9 pieces of information in their working memory at one time. And uh, you'll see this with businesses with their phone numbers. They will try to chunk information for you in order to make it more likely that you will remember their information in order to call them if you need. So um, my, one, one thing I saw was a, a billboard for uh, I guess it was a divorce attorney and it says need a divorce call 281 freedom all right so you only have to remember two things uh, the area code 281 so if you have the our brain interprets that as one thing because uh, we use it all the time so 281 and then the word freedom so that, that's really easy for you to remember only two pieces of information and it's a uh, it's something that you can do as well in your in your studying and in your daily life to help it uh, to help you remember things uh, we will use this when we talk about um, acronyms and acrostics in just a, a few minutes and again you want to make associations anything that you can associate with something you already know so like you know FB was easier for you to remember because you think Facebook okay it just reminds you of something that you already know so when you are working with material that you need to remember later on try to form as many associations as you can so when you're reading about some phenomenon maybe in psychology class you know the bystander effect try to think of examples of the bystander effect that you've seen either in your personal life or in the news you can activate prior knowledge. What do I already know about this? What have I already heard about this? Um, you can consider similarities and differences between what you're learning now and what you either have just finished learning or what you're about to learn. If you're looking at, at history or if you're, um, you know, things in chemistry or physics, you know, consider cause and effect. What made this happen next? What was the, the chain of events that occurred? It will make it easier for you to uh, work with that information and recall it later on. And just generally ask lots of questions. You know, use that active reading system that, that we were talking about um, in order to, to make those associations and really solidify that in your, in your memory. It'll make it easier for you to recall later on because that way when you think about one thing, since you've made that connection, it'll help you have that, oh, that reminds me kind of moment. All right, I promised you some fun memory strategies. So here are some mnemonic devices, and some of them you may have heard before. Uh, there's my 281 freedom right there. But uh, so, for example, rhymes and rhythms. Sometimes we learn something by learning a song. Okay, so maybe you learned a song to help you memorize the states and their capitals or all the prepositions. Uh, and uh, sometimes it doesn't even have to be a song or a rhyme. It can just be the rhythm of something. Uh, one time my son came uh, came home and he was he was much younger then and he says, do you think I know how to spell Mississippi? And he was really little and I said, no, that's such a big word. There's no way you know that. And you know, that's kind of what we do. He says, do you think I can? And I say, no, surely not. And uh, then he tries to show me how he can do something. So uh, can, do you think I can spell Mississippi? No, no, that's such a big word and you're such a small child. And he goes, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 All right, so that's how he learned it, was just this nice little rhythm of, yes. it, do you remember that? Yeah, I okay. do. <laughs> M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 uh, so <laughs> fond memories. Now I've activated the dog. The dog is over here now. All right, so that's that's one way, and I guarantee you, uh, anything that you need to learn, like any major thing that you need to learn for a class, someone out there has created some mnemonic device for it. So definitely search the web. Don't uh, don't reinvent the wheel. There's also acronyms and acrostics. These make uh, these make use of chunking. And so, uh, for example, a home, what, what acronyms do is you take the first letter of each item in a list that you're trying to memorize and you make a word out of it. Okay, so for example, Holmes. Holmes is how you can remember the Great Lakes. Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, Superior. Um, or, you know, face would be the way that, the, uh, that we remember the different um, so the the space the spaces in the treble scale I'll show you that in just a minute um, 
So, and then also acrostics. So here, maybe you have a sentence that uh, each word in the sentence shares the same first letter as another word in the sentence. So for example, King Philip came over for good spaghetti. That's kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And then there's every good boy does fine. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So my son takes piano. And one of the things that we had to do when he was learning this was to listen to this CD over and over and over again. And so I have this fully memorized, but uh, there was this woman's voice that would say, the treble clef spaces are easy, you see, cause space rhymes with face, so spell F-A-C-E. A letter for each treble line, every good boy does fine. And then a man's voice comes on and says, uh, the spaces for bass, don't call it bass, all cows eat grass. The bass lines can make you sound smart, good bridges don't fall apart. So here you've got, you've got the song, you've got these acronyms and acrostics, you've got the woman's voice doing the, the treble, and you've got the man's voice doing the bass. Uh, you've got rhymes. There's a lot of memory aids going into this, and that is why I will never be able to forget it, even if I try. Uh, but it can be an example of how powerful these tools can be. Uh, and sometimes the chunking can just be straight up uh, a word made out of numbers, so 281 freedom or something like that. Uh, you can also use uh, interactive imagery, but uh, sorry, going back to, to chunking. Um, that's why you want to organize your notes. So maybe sometimes you, when you're taking notes, you might have information that at first just seems scattered. But if you can take that information and or, you know, organize it in a meaningful way, then it'll be easier for you to form associations between those items in order to uh, recall it better later on. And then finally, uh, association or you know interactive imagery. Notice how a lot of these things interact with each other. They have a lot of, they have a lot to do with each other. But this interactive imagery can get kind of interesting. Um, if you are reading something and you are able to actually visualize what it is that you're learning, you're much more likely to remember it. We have we have a lot of we have a lot going for us when it comes to visual memory. We tend to memorize things more easily when we see something than something that we heard. Uh, so for example, when learning algebra, if you can create this, this image right here to help people visualize what's going on, that can be helpful. Um, sometimes if it helps to make it as bizarre as possible. So here you have uh, Gary the Bull relaxing on a sofa, and that is how someone is trying to remember that Sofia is the capital of Bulgaria. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I give this example because I did have a list that I had to remember once, um, and we were studying interactive imagery. And this was a, a, a quiz on the test, uh, or a, a question on the test. So uh, complete the list. And the list was airplane, tree, uh, let's see, airplane, tree, envelope, earring, bucket, basketball, salami. And so, for example, the reason he gave us airplane, and I was supposed to remember that airplane, uh, that the next item in the list was trees, because my interactive imagery, normally we think, okay, well, an airplane flying into some trees, crashing into some trees, but you need to make it bizarre if it's really going to stick. So I imagined um, all these trees, like like Ents, okay, like from the Lord of the Rings, the, the, the walking, talking trees and so there were trees boarding this plane instead of people and so there's branches scraping up against the overhead compartments and there's you know a, a couple um you know buckling their sapling into a car seat and and there's some folks from Canada they're maple trees so the more you can make it bizarre then if someone tells me airplane and I just think what was my imagery with airplane oh I remember because how can I forget all right so so when it comes to using bizarre interactive imagery, bizarre is really the key word there. So uh, anything that's silly or weird or even just annoying that you can't get out of your head, that is going to be a, a good memory tool for you to use.